them up in prayer. Thank you, King of Kings. Lord, we magnify your name. We bless your mighty name. We thank you, Adonai, for everything that you have done. We thank you for how far you have brought us. Lord, we lift up your name today because only you are God and there is none like thee. We gathered here today because of you, King of glory, and nothing else. May your name be praised. May your name be glorified, King of glory. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you do a new thing in our lives today. We pray, O oh God, that your presence, O oh Lord, will be made manifest in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. Forgive us of our sins and our iniquities. And let your blood wash us. Let your blood, O oh Lord, cleanse us, purify us, and sanctify us. Cleanse our hearts, renew our mind, O oh Lord. And may your blood, O oh Lord, be in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for those watching online, O oh Lord, that your blood will sanctify them as well. Your blood will purify them in the name of Jesus Christ. That the same thing that you are doing over here, O oh God, you will do it unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit the worship team into your hands, the men of God into your hands, the entire service into your hands, O oh God. That your spirit will move through the service in the name of Jesus. That your power will touch our hearts, King of glory. Transform us, deliver us, King of glory, and give us an encounter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Elohim, have your way in this place. Let your spirit take charge in this place, O oh God. And let everything we do today glorify your holy name. We cancel, we destroy every plans of the enemy. We commit those that are not here yet into your, into your hands, O oh God. The Lord, your divine protection will be upon them. That they will come here safely and sound. And we shall all come together as one to fellowship. May your name be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give Jesus a shout of praise? Can we give Jesus a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Come on, continue to give him a shout of praise. Don't stop. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands like this. That drowns our rose, there is an ocean deeper than fear, the tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside, it's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising. Come on, bursting. Say bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. Come on, clap, clap. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive. In the river, come on, clap. We come alive. There is a current stirring deep inside, it's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven. Crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising. Sing, bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come.
come alive in the river. Come on, clap, clap, clap. We come alive. We come alive. Broke, break up the prison doors. Sit all the captives free. Spring up the well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up the well in me. Again, break up in the prison doors, break up in prison doors. The captain's free. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Come on, we come alive in the river. 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 Hey, spring up a well. Continue to clap for him. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Don't stop, don't stop. Continue to give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's just worship him in this place. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. Father God, we say thank you, God, for your goodness, oh Jesus, for shedding your blood for us on the cross, oh God. Father, right now, with every head bowed and eyes closed, Father God, right now we come before your presence, Jesus, with thanksgiving. We come before you right now with hearts open wide, oh God. Jesus, we come before you just to say thank you for all that you've done and the gratitude that we have towards you, oh Father, for there's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Father God. We lift you up in this moment, Jesus, because you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's praise him tonight. Let's worship his holy name.
come on open up your mouths tell him how much he's holy come on let's take this time to just open up our mouth and tell him how much he's holy tell Jesus how much you want to be holy come on ask him to fill you up with his presence open up your mouth come on we won't continue if you open up your mouth come on he's a holy God tell Jesus I want to walk like you Jesus, I want to have your image. Fill me up with your presence, Jesus. Jesus, because you're holy. I want to be holy, God. Come on, open up your mouth. Because you're holy, Jesus. He's a holy God.
closed as we're thinking God as we're giving glory unto God let us have our eyes closed that we can focus on Jesus because with our eyes open it is very easy to get distracted by the things that you are looking at so at this moment let us close our eyes and let us just look unto Jesus let us just think of his glory let us just think of all that he has done for us let us just pick 
to Jesus in our, in our minds as we're worshiping Him, as we're him, giving Him the glory, as we're honoring His holy name, as we're exalting His name. Let us just picture Him. Let us keep our eyes closed and stay away from distraction because at this moment, nothing else matters. At this moment, only Jesus matters. So let us give Him the glory, the reverence, and the honor that He deserves. Let us give Him our full, undivided attention that nothing else will snatch our attention. Nothing else shall steal our attention, but that our attention shall be focused on him and him alone oh Jesus Jesus we worship you my Lord we give you the glory we give you the honor we praise your holy name almighty God for there is none like you Lord there is none who is worthy of the glory there is none who is worthy of the worship there is none who is worthy of the adoration there is none who is worthy of our lives but only you Jesus thank you my Lord thank you my father that on this day my arms my hands work fine that on this day my eyes my ears work fine that on this day Lord my mouth works fine that my mind is able to function I give you the glory because on my own I wouldn't be able to do it but you are the one who created me you are the one who created each and every one of us in this place you are the one who made us each distinct and different oh Lord no one else could have done that but only you and not only that oh God but you came oh Lord on this earth and you died for each and every one of us oh Lord you took your time to prepare you took your time to create us still knowing that we would sin against you still knowing that we would go against you and not only that Lord but you would come on this earth to die for us ah, Lord I give you the glory I give you the honor thank you Jesus thank you almighty God that you would give us another chance to be reconciled back to the Father thank you Lord that you would give us another chance to go before you to be one with you again to have a relationship with you to be intimate with you oh God I give you the glory I give you the honor because no one else could have done that no man could have done that no other religion could have done that not Buddha not Muhammad oh Lord but only you Jesus only you Jesus was the one who lived a sinless life only you my father could have made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him Lord I give you the glory Lord I give you the honor thank you Jesus because you did not remain in that tomb you did not remain in that dirt but today you are alive today you are in our midst today you are here with us today almighty God we're able to glorify a God that is alive the king of kings and the Lord of lords that we're not here worshiping a dead idol we're not here worshiping stick or stone we're not here worshiping anything that was made by human hands but we are worshiping the king of kings and the lord of lords the one who created the hands that we have today thank you jesus thank you my father i honor and i glorify your holy name oh god for you have brought me out of so much oh lord king of all glory i thank you let us remember, let us go back to all that Jesus has done for us. Let us reflect on all that he has done for us. How he has been so faithful in our lives. Even at the times when we knew nothing about him. Even when we wanted nothing to do with him. He still looked for us. He still said, I need you. I need you to serve me. I need you to glorify me. I need you to tell my people. He chose you out of millions and millions. That today you are here. And yet there are still others in the world. There are still others living in sin. There are still others others who are in deception there are still others in lies that are worshiping the things of this world rather than worshiping the true living God give him the glory that he chose you give him the glory that you are here in this moment for it is not a coincidence
continents. But it is all part of the plan of the Lord that he has for you. Give him the glory and honor his name. Thank you, Jesus, because I had nothing going for my life, oh God. Lord, I had no purpose. I had no meaning, oh Lord. I was lonely, almighty God. Lord, though I had a good job. Lord, though I had my own apartment. Though I had my own car, almighty God. Lord, I was still empty inside. Lord, I thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, because I would fill my own fridge in time with alcohol, Lord. I would go and buy weed, oh Lord, smoking, oh Lord, trying to make myself feel good. And nothing worked, oh God. Nothing worked, oh God. Nothing was compared to your glory. Nothing was compared to your presence. Nothing was compared to what you can do. Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I give you the honor, oh God. For women cannot fill that void. Men were not able to fill that void. Nobody was able to fill that void. Not video games, not my mother, not my brothers, oh Lord, not even myself but only you Jesus I give you the glory I give you the honor oh God that today oh Lord you have chosen me as your servant that today oh Lord I can call upon your name that today oh Lord I am no longer a deception oh Lord but I know who the truth the way and the life is I know who shall lead me to the Father that is you Jesus that is you Lord who shall lead me into eternity I give you the glory I give you the honor I praise your holy name Jesus oh thank you Lord thank you my Father I honor honor your name thank you Jesus for there is truly no one like you there is no one like you almighty God oh Lord for you love without condition but this world says to love if you first are loved oh God but you say to love without condition who else is there like you Jesus who else is there like you oh God for we hated you and yet you still came to die for us we wanted nothing to do with you Lord and yet you still came to die for us oh God Lord through all the pain that you suffered Lord through all the lashes that you suffered Lord even on that cross you were going from excruciating pain to excruciating pain nailed on that cross oh Lord with the throne with the crown of thrones on your head blood all over you almighty God with your back open oh Lord to the point that your ribs were exposed oh God and yet oh Lord you still said father forgive them for they know not what they do Lord who else is there like you who else is there like you oh God that the Bible describes you as a lamb through all that pain through all that suffering you kept quiet oh God you kept quiet knowing that you were in the right and they were in the wrong and yet you still kept quiet Lord I give you the glory Lord I give you the honor almighty God that you did all of that for me that you would do all all of that for me oh God someone who wanted nothing to do with you someone who wanted nothing to do with you oh Lord King of all glory that I never recognized I never recognized your power I never recognized who you were I just recognized you as the Son of God Lord I would brush you aside Lord I wanted nothing to do with you and yet here I am here I am Lord able to glorify your name able to exalt your name able to praise your name thank you Jesus thank you Lord for the power of forgiveness that is in you the mercy that you give us thank you Lord that you are able to reconcile us oh God Lord that no amount of goodness can save us Lord that no amount of goodness that can save us that our own good deeds are not enough oh Lord that our own works are not enough but it is only what you did on the cross it is only by believing trusting in what you did my Lord I honor and I glorify you Lord because you are not dead but you are alive and that you would suffer for me oh God so that today I can have life so that today I can be here to honor your name so that today I can be here to praise your holy name I exalt your name Lord I praise your name and I thank you I thank you and I lift you high above everything else oh God for no one else oh Lord has died for me no material object in this world has died for me only you Jesus and no one has given me life and life more abundantly but only you my Lord I honor and I glorify your holy name thank you Lord Jesus thank you almighty God Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This moment, let us reflect on our lives and let us enter into a place of repentance before the Lord and confess all that we have done that has not glorified Him all that we have done that has dishonored his name we are all in need of the mercy of God for if a man says that he has no sin he lies to himself 
and he calls God a liar. So at this moment, let us go before him. Let us recognize all that we have done that is wrong, that has made him want to turn his face away from us. Let us ask for his mercy. Let us ask for his forgiveness. And let us truly repent with our hearts, with all that we have, that we recognize what we are doing is evil and that he is holy. That we cannot serve him if there's evil found in us, if there's darkness found in us, if there's iniquity found in us, no matter how small. Many times we let the little things pass us by, thinking that it is small, thinking that it doesn't matter. Even Jesus said that if you lust with your eyes for a woman, you've already committed adultery in your heart. If you have hatred towards a brother or a sister, you've already committed murder in your heart. Things that look so small to us. Even in the, in the Bible, in 1 Samuel 15, verse 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Things that look small to us is big to the eyes of God. Things that look like it's nothing to us is big in the eyes of God. We have to truly reflect and look back at everything that we have done. Where we have grown comfortable. Where we have allowed the devil to enter into our lives. Where we have given permission to the devil to enter into our lives. No matter how small it might seem. Let us reflect and let us look and let us go before the Lord and repent. That we may truly turn away. That we may go back to serving him. Because even in the, in, in the same book, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20, it says, Then Samuel said to the people, Do not fear. You have done all this wickedness, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Though we have done all these things, we are still able to serve the Lord, but we must repent. We must turn away and turn to Him only. That we must remain and keep ourselves holy, holy, holy and without blemish. And at this moment, let us go into that place of repentance, asking for the mercy of God. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I recognize myself as a sinner, O God, in need of your mercy, O Lord. For nothing can save me, Almighty God, but only you, only what Jesus has done on the cross. Lord, I have sinned before you. In my heart, there is iniquity. In my heart, there is stubbornness, O Lord. In my heart, there is complaining. In my heart, there is adultery. In my heart, there is murder. In my heart, there is envy. There is strive, Almighty God. Lord, I come before you to confess these things, O God, because I need your mercy, O Lord. I need your forgiveness, O Lord. I must turn away from these things, O God, because I want to serve you in spirit and in truth, O Lord. But nothing else will show me mercy. No one else will show me mercy but only you no one else can blot out my transgressions but only you Lord so I come before you oh God to ask for your mercy I come before you oh God to repent and turn away oh Lord that I may only turn to you oh God that my focus may only be on you that my eyes may only be on heaven and not on the things on this earth oh God that I not dwell in my flesh oh Lord because I know in my flesh mighty God I cannot please you at all Lord I come before you to repent to ask for your mercy to turn away to turn aside from these evil things to turn aside from these filthy things because all these things are filthy in your eyes they, we might not be able to see them but in your eyes they are filthy oh god lord i need your mercy lord i need your forgiveness almighty oh god so i come before you oh lord to confess of my sins i come before you oh lord that you might forgive me I come before you, almighty God, that you might blot out my transgressions, O oh Lord, King of all glory, because I need your mercy, O oh Lord. With this body, I have defiled this body. I have committed fornication. I have committed adultery. With these lips, O oh God, you said it is what comes out of a man that defiles a man. With these lips, O oh Lord, I've, I've, I've uttered rumors. I've uttered lies. I've said curse words. I've said profanity, O oh mighty God. I've spoken death over people, O oh Lord. I've spoken so much murder with these lips, O oh God, even unto my own family, my Lord. And I ask for your mercy, O oh God. I ask for your forgiveness as I repent, as I turn away 
way, oh Lord, that these lips may only be used for your glory, that these lips may only be used to glorify your name. Oh Lord, that it will not be lips that glorify your name one second and then go and curse another's name the other. Lord, but that these lips may remain holy, that these re- lips may remain without blemish. Lord, I come before you to ask for your mercy. I come before you to repent. I come before you because I recognize my own sin, oh Lord, that I am not holy. I am not holy, but only you are holy. I am not righteous. I am not righteous, but only you are righteous, my Lord. And only you can make me righteous. Only you can make me holy. Only you can forgive me. Only you can blot out my transgressions. No amount of good will ever be enough to satisfy you. No amount of sacrifice will ever be enough to satisfy you, Almighty God. But it is only the mercy of God that can help us. It is only your mercy that can help us, my Lord. It is only your mercy that can help us. So I call upon your mercy, my Lord. I call upon your mercy, my Lord. I call upon your mercy, my King. Let it come and encounter us in this place that are come and encounter us in this place Lord I call upon your mercy I cannot move forward without your mercy I cannot serve you without your mercy oh God for how can you allow a temple that is unclean a temple that is filthy to serve your house to serve your house to serve you Lord I need your mercy I need your forgiveness oh God I cannot move forward oh Lord I cannot move forward with you oh God if my if my sins are not forgiven and my transgressions are not blotted out Lord I need your mercy Lord I need your forgiveness Lord I need you to forgive me oh God help me help us all that we may truly turn away and truly turn to you to serve you in spirit and in truth help us Lord help us my King We have called upon the mercy of God. We must also call upon the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus said, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of sins of many. So at this moment, let us call upon the blood of Jesus, that our sins may be remiss. That no longer do we have to turn to the tabernacles of old. No longer do we have to turn to the priests of old. But now we can just turn to the blood of Jesus. That we can be washed and made new. That we can be made clean. That we can that everything can be blotted out. We must also believe that the blood of Jesus is real. We must also believe that the blood of Jesus is washing us. That the blood of Jesus is sanctifying. That the blood of Jesus is truly making us as whiter than snow this moment let us call upon the blood of Jesus over yourselves over every area of your life that it make you new that it make you whiter than snow Jesus I come before you O Lord and I call upon your blood to begin to wash me clean to begin to sanctify me to begin to destroy every power of darkness that is on the inside of me to destroy every sin that is on the inside of me O Lord everything that I've confessed with my mouth O Lord I call upon your blood to begin to make me new from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet Lord that your blood renew my mind O God that every evil thought that is in my mind that it come out in the name of Jesus O Lord as your blood is washing me clean as your blood is making me new that your blood come and penetrate my heart and take out all dirtiness all filthiness Every, every ounce of iniquity, no matter how small it might be, let it come out of my heart completely. Let your blood flush everything out. Let your blood flush everything out, oh God. Renew in me a clean spirit, oh mighty God. A right spirit, oh God. Make, Jesus, we need your blood. Make, let your blood come upon me, oh God. Let your blood renew my eyes. Let your blood renew my heart. Let your blood renew my lips. Let your blood renew my ears, O God. Wherever you see that there is filthiness, wherever that you see there is dirtiness, O God, wherever you see, O God, that it is not pleasing unto you, let your blood wash it all away, Jesus. Let your blood take it all out, O God. Lord, for I do not want to serve you if there is still dirtiness on the inside of me, if there is still filthiness on the inside of me. So I call upon your blood to wash it all away. I call upon your blood to take it all out. Everything, Almighty God. Lord, because I cannot continue like this. I cannot continue, O Lord, if I am dirty, O God. For even there is a part in the Bible, O God, where there was a priest serving you and Satan came to tell you, O God, 
God, that this man, he is dirty. He is filthy, oh Lord. Lord, I cannot continue if I am filthy. I cannot continue if I am dirty. So I call upon your blood to wash me clean. I call upon your blood to make me new. I call upon your blood to make my garments white as snow. To make my garment as wool. To make them new again, oh God. Because your blood is the what remisses my sins. Your blood is what wipes away all of my transgressions. I call upon your blood, Lord Jesus. I call upon your blood to make me new. Thank you, Lord. As we have called upon the mercy of God, as we have called upon the blood of Jesus, let us begin to call upon the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot continue to live right for God if we do not have the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us every desire to turn away from the iniquity, to turn away from sin and turn to God. To turn away from our own desires and to turn to the desires of God. To pray, to fast, to worship, to be in our word. So at this moment, let us call upon the Holy Spirit that He give us a new desire. That He take us away from every sinful act, every sinful environment that may cause us to sin. Even if it has the chance ask that the Holy Spirit take you away from that environment, take you away from that place. Let us call upon the Holy Spirit at this moment. Let us speak to the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I come before you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and you fill us, oh Holy Spirit. That you come and give us new desires. That you come, oh Lord, and take away every old desire. That our desire may only be for Jesus. That our life may truly be dedicated unto Jesus. Holy Spirit, that we may truly be dead to ourselves. Holy Spirit, help us to deny ourselves every day. To pick up our cross and to follow after Jesus. No matter how hard it may get. No matter how weary we get. No matter how tired we get. Holy Spirit, that you be our strength. Holy Spirit that you be the one to lift us up Holy Spirit that you be the one to lead us and guide us for even the word of God says that those that are led by the Spirit are sons of God Holy Spirit lead me and guide me everywhere I go that I be pleasing unto the Lord Holy Spirit help me that you may lead me into that secret place every time Holy Spirit help me that you may lead me into the word rather than to my phone Holy Spirit help me that you may lead me into worship rather than going to the TV rather than going to go something to eat oh God that I may place my own desires aside and I may place your desires first Holy Spirit come and give us a new desire Holy Spirit come and give us a new hunger Holy Spirit come and give us a fresh fire that we will burn like never before Holy Spirit that we will seek Jesus like never before Holy Spirit help us in this place because we cannot continue without you we cannot serve God without you we cannot pray without you we cannot worship without you we cannot read the word of God without you we need you Holy Spirit Spirit. So I ask that you come, that you come and that you truly take over our lives. That you come and you come and you take away every desire of the flesh, every desire of ourselves. That our only desire be for you, Jesus. That our only desire be for you. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus. That you help us to have an open heart, an open mind to receive all that you have to speak for us today. That we may receive the word with understanding. That we may hear the word and be doers of the word. That we may not just hear the word and let it go out the other ear. But that we may meditate on this word even as we leave on this place. Holy Spirit, that you may help us to, to be fed on this day. Holy Spirit, and I pray that... You use the men of God that is the team tonight. That you use them that his words not be his own, but it be yours. That tonight we be fed. That tonight we be transformed. That we do not go home the same. In the name of Jesus. Can we please give glory to God? Come on. Come on. Let us give him a shout of glory. Let us give him praise. Let us exalt his name. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands for Jesus in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands for Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That was a very powerful prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's begin with our announcements. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone to Generation Rise Up Ministry. We thank God that you are here today. I believe that God has something for you today. I believe that God has something powerful for you today. I'm, I'm excited to be here today. 
because I'm also partaker of what God has for, for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Our church hours are every Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have Bible studies every Wednesday at 7 p.m. where we all gather and we receive from the Word of God. Amen. It is very necessary to receive from the Word of God. For we shall live by it. It is the only thing that will sustain us. It is what makes our foundation as believers in Jesus Christ strong. Amen. Hallelujah. We also have service every Sunday at 1 p.m. You don't want to miss out. The same way that God moves on Wednesday is the same way he moves on Sunday. And we preach. We have um, someone who preaches the gospel, who preaches the word of God to, to the people of God. So you don't want to miss out. You want to be here because God has something for you every day. Whether it's Wednesday, Sunday, any day of the week, God always has something for you. Amen. Hallelujah. We also have deliverance teachings every Monday at 5 p.m. here at Generation Rise of Ministry. And the one who uh, teaches us is Mama Seraphine, our spiritual mother. And the Holy Spirit uses her to teach us about deliverance, about our freedom, about our liberty. It is very important in these times to obtain your freedom to obtain your deliverance amen so you don't want to miss out if you can make it we're here at 5 p.m every single monday amen also our social media platforms we have instagram youtube and facebook if you have not followed us already you can go to those platforms and follow us so that you won't miss out on any of the services or any of the live streams that we record here at generation rise of ministry amen also, we have Friday midnight prayer. Uh, so it's pretty much Friday midnight going into Saturday. We gather here at 1230 a.m. So it's at 1230 a.m. Friday going into Saturday. We all gather here for prayer. It is very important to gather for prayer during those hours, during that time, because that is a time where the enemy operates the most. But if we come together, we are able to destroy the plans of the enemy. We are able to prosper in what we do. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, I have, a, I have a, an announcement to make. It's a very special announcement. We are soon going to start homiletics. And the, the one who will be hosting the homiletics class is Pastor Glody. It is the art of preaching. And it's going to be starting at 7 p.m. on June the 8th. You don't want to miss out. In fact, I was part of the homiletics that we had uh, beforehand. And it was, it was so amazing because pastor literally took the knowledge that he received from cfni a very well-known institution and he taught us the art of preaching he taught he taught us how to prepare a message and how to deliver it and i was part of that class many of us here today we were part of that class also and it has taught me a lot it has helped me even when god uh, uses me to minister to his people it has taught me in a great way it has helped me in a great way so um, I'm excited. You don't want to miss out. Like I said, June 8th at 7 p.m. If you need further details, go to Pastor Glody and he will be sure to give you those details. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Also, we have weekly evangelism. We have evangelism every Saturday at 6 p.m. We gather here at this church. We pray before we head out to evangelize. We usually go to Sundance Square in Fort Worth and we minister the gospel to people out there. Amen. God is a God of outside. He is not limited to these four walls. We have been called to evangelize, to share the good news to those who are lost, to share the good news to those who are in need of it. Amen. So you don't want to miss out. Hallelujah. Also, right now we have our donation basket here to the right. Um, we have a sign that is put up. It's pretty much for uh, GRU Africa. So if, if you feel led in your heart to donate, they are in need of our donations so that the ministry can, can grow, so that the ministry can move forward. Amen. It's for the advancement of the kingdom. That basket will always be there. If you feel led in your heart to just donate, to give, it all goes straight to Africa. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Who's excited for tithes and offerings? Come on, I don't know about you, but I am excited for tithes and offerings. When you give unto the Lord, He shall surely give back unto you. Amen. We have many ways to give. You can visit our website at www.grchurch.com slash donates. And it will take you directly to the page where you can give. We also take checks that are payable to Generation Rise Up Ministry. And also we have a QR code. And we have Zelle as well. You can simply pull out your phone, 
go to your camera app, scan the QR code, and it will take you directly to the website where you can give. Also, you can type in that phone number on the screen, and it will give you the opportunity to give through Zell. Amen. And we're going to have our worship team lead us as we give unto the Lord. Amen. If we can all get up on our feet as we worship and give unto the Lord. Amen. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. And I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. See more and more. Cause I need you more and more I'm chasing, I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more See more and more More and more See more and more Cause I need you more and more And now I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more See more and more More and more See more and more More Let's clap our hands for Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. If we can all stretch forth our hands as we pray for our tithes and offerings. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Father, for these tithes and offerings, O God, that your people have given to your church, Father. We thank you, O God, for we know, O God, that this is for the advancement of your kingdom. Father, and I thank you for those who have given, O oh God. I thank you, Father, and I ask you, O oh God, to bless them in every area of their lives, O oh God. May they never lack in their homes, Father. May you provide for their necessities, O oh righteous God. May you give them whatever it is they are in need of, O oh Father, and may you give them the desires of their heart, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for they have given out of the abundance of their heart. Father in heaven, you see everything, you know everything, oh God. You know what your people are in need of, oh Father, and I ask you to answer them, Father. Whatever it is that they desire, whatever it is that they are seeking for, oh God, I ask that you give it unto them, Father, as they have given unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, for those who are not able to give, oh Father, that you make a way where there seems to be no way, Father. If they're looking for a job, if they're looking for a source of income, Father, may you provide for them, for you are Jireh, you are the provider, oh God, and you know what we are in need of, Father. Father in heaven, I thank you 
for these tithes and offerings i cover them in the blood of jesus christ of nazareth and i remove everything that is not of you father in the name of jesus christ may these tithes and offerings multiply oh god for the advancement of your kingdom oh father may you continue to use the people that have given oh father may you continue to use those father who know oh righteous god that this is for the advancement of your church in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we all pray and we all say amen hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah who is excited for the word of god i don't know about you but today is a special day and i know that god has something for me so i am excited for the word of god if i were you i'd be more excited than that who's excited for the living word of god he woke you up this morning he gave you the opportunity to be here so that you can receive what he has for you I don't know about you but I know that God has something for me and my ears are open to hear my heart is open to receive because I know that the Word of God brings change and transformation and I won't miss out on it amen hallelujah so if you are excited for the word I need you to get up on your feet as we welcome the one who will deliver the Word of God the one who will minister to us our very own evangelist Jeremiah Abraham Let's clap our hands for him as we welcome him. Come on, you can do better than that. Celebrate Jesus in this place. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Don't stop. Continue to celebrate the one that deserves it. Continue to celebrate the one that deserves it. Praise him, praise him. Come on, praise him, praise him. So there was one thing that I remembered when I was in Catholic school with my parents I couldn't talk too much I couldn't move too much you know what my mother did with the time that I moved too much or talked to my brother too much you know what they did what did they do to you what else you know my mom did this Jeez. why because there we couldn't move there was in a place of liberty there the devil bound your feet. Now you're able to run for Jesus. The devil bound your hands. Now you're able to clap for Jesus. The devil bound your tongue. Now you're able to shout for Jesus. Come on, whatever you need to do, just lift up the name of Jesus. If you need to run, run. If you need to shout, shout. If you need to clap your hands, clap your hands. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate him. If you know him, celebrate him. If you know what he's done in your life, celebrate him. The Bible says that at his presence, the earth shakes. So then what do you want me to do when I feel the presence of God? Hallelujah. You know, you know why the earth shakes? Because it understands the presence of God. A lot of people, they don't know how to celebrate Jesus. They don't know how to run for Jesus. They don't know how to shout for Jesus because they don't know the true meaning of the presence of God. Hallelujah. The Lord has placed in my heart. <clears throat> Today's title is There is no heaven without holiness. Hallelujah. I got two, three amens. Not a lot of people like that message. Hallelujah. But before I go forward, I'd like to give honor, honor is due. If we can please celebrate my spiritual parents, Mama Seraphine and Papa Joseph. For their great work in the kingdom. I honor them. I respect them. I love them. They have really done a mighty work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this very moment, I need us to pray. You can put it a little bit louder. I need us to pray. And when I say pray, I mean go deep. Don't look at me. Close your eyes and pray. Close your eyes and pray. God has something special for us. I believe that God's about to take us to a certain place. A certain place that we once knew. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Tell God, God, I want the big thing. I want the new thing. I want to be fed with good food. God, come. God, come. God, come. God, come. 
Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Be loud, be loud. If your neighbor is dry, tell them, be on fire before I set you on fire. Don't move from them. Set them on fire, provoke them. Pray. Father, I glorify you. I magnify you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords, the Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Father, I magnify you, Jesus, because there is no one like you, Lord. Father, I hand this moment over into your hands, God of power. Lord, your spirit is superior than any other spirit, than any principality, than any demon, than any host of wickedness. Father, you are in control of the atmosphere. You are in control of the one on the pulpit. You are in control of your people. Father, Lord, I bind every strong man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, let the blood of your son begin to sanctify, begin to purify, begin to cleanse everything that is not of you out of this place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I declare and I decree that every power of darkness that is taking territory over this place I bind it by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I declare the eyes of your people open I declare healing of spirit healing of soul delivering of mind in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my to redeem the God that lives the God that still speaks the God that doesn't get tired of doing miracles the God that doesn't get tired of handing miracles breakthroughs blessings lord we magnify you jesus take over touch the heart of your people may the hearts of your people never remain the same in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah pray 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 don't let nothing distract you pray 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 don't let nothing distract you don't let nothing distract you because god wants to do something new you pray I will know how much you want it the way you pray I will know how tired you really are the way you pray I will know how much you really love him Go deep, go deep, go deep, go deep. Go deep, go deep, go deep. Go deep, go deep. Go deep. Jesus, let your glory be present. Let your light rule. Let your light govern. Let your light win territory. Let your light win territory in the minds of your people. In the lives of your people. In any department, every area. In the name of Jesus. Father, Father, do what only you can do. Father, do what only you can do. Jesus, we call upon your name. Jesus, we call upon your name. you to go deep go crazy go crazy tell God I need your presence don't let me leave out of these doors the same I want to hear the new thing the mysteries the secret things of God God goes deep with the people that are willing to go deep they are willing to suffocate themselves in the presence of God they are willing to shower themselves with the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. volume please in Jesus name thank you father let's clap our hands for Jesus thank you father I preach you praise and God will do the rest amen thank you Lord
I want to start off by saying that as you're standing here at this moment, there is a war in the air for your soul. Whatever you may be thinking about at this moment, whatever you may be desiring, I always want you to remember that there is a war in the air for your soul. The devil is victorious the moment he plants sickness in your body. The devil is victorious whenever he wins your soul because of the sickness that he planted. The devil is victorious when he has you addicted to drugs. The devil is victorious when he has your soul because of the addiction that he handed you over. So meaning while you still have life, while you're still living, while you're still breathing, there is still purpose, there is still destiny that is crying out. It wants to express, it wants to manifest himself. But who knows that the only way to win, the only way for victory is holiness. Hallelujah. You want to think about making it on the pulpit while there's a war in the air for your soul. You want to make sure that you preach better than your other brother but you forget that there is a war in the air for your soul you want to prosper you want to have money you want to earn respect from other people not knowing and forgetting that there is a war in the air for your soul it is light and darkness the way that darkness wins you is by filling your soul with darkness but the battle doesn't end until you take your last breath I was meditating last night and I began to ask God God I need your help and the Holy Spirit began to speak to me I written down I read I, read, I wrote it down and I said this every small moment on the pulpit can mean someone's eternity in heaven that's why it's very necessary to preach and target the soul why because God is fighting for the soul just like Satan is also fighting for the soul gold is valuable but it's very hidden to find it and to keep it I'm telling you if you were to go and dig up a hole and you found gold do you know how what you would do to protect us the, the, the gold in like manner when Satan searches and goes deep and finds your soul he does everything to protect the soul that he claims is his own hallelujah the time is coming where the heavens will open and the Messiah will come I believe there is still people of God here in this city I believe there is people of God here in this state that are still keeping themselves from God in holiness hallelujah holiness isn't just from the outside you can be holy in the outside but you're murmuring in the inside you can be holy in the outside but being murderer in the inside you can be holy in the outside but hatred in the inside unforgiveness in the inside jealousy envy do you know what makes the outside is the inside if you want change stop buying you better clothing on the store thinking that that will help you make you look better you're a prayer warrior before your pastors but you're lazy before God you're a hypocrite there is no negotiation with the Holy Spirit there's no negotiation with the presence of God you can't taste of the world and taste of the presence of God and think that everything is okay the devil has you how are you being Christian do you know one thing yesterday I found out I saw this video I was scrolling and out of nowhere I saw it do you know that there is courses now for speaking in tongues there is lessons literally teaching they will teach you how to speak in tongues and they will tell you look just start opening your mouth and start just saying whatever 
Do you know how many people leave the church because of hypocrisy? Because they said my brother was a hypocrite. This sister said she loved Jesus, but she was a hypocrite. They go back in, into the world. But in the world, there's more hypocrites, but you don't find them leaving the world. Why? Because of sin. They want the sin. They find pleasure in that sin. Hallelujah. If we can please go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verse 8 to 9. I repeat Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 to 9. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. If you're there please arise. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 to 9. If you're there say amen. We're going somewhere. I want us to all read at the same time on three. One, two, three. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any renous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk on it. Let's clap our hands for that word. I preach, you praise, and God will do the rest. There is, in the book of Isaiah, a road called the highway of holiness. Do you know God was talking about the people of Israel? That a time will come where there will be such thing called a highway of holiness. A time will come where you will freely be able to choose holiness. Do you know in the highways, there's no traffic. In the highways, it's known as roads that you can go fast and nothing can stop you. That's why it says no lion, no creature will be able to be on that road. No unclean person is able to qualify to walk on that highway. Why is there no more holiness in the church? Because people like to run away from it. People don't desire purity. People desire to care more about the opinion of men more than the opinion of God. They like to focus on how their pastor, how their leader will see them. But never worry about how God may see their life at that moment. There is such thing called the highway of holiness. Where God will prepare a road for his saints, for his church. For the church to be able to freely walk in holiness. If there is anything... Look, when one is holy, it's very difficult for you to miss the plan of Satan against your life. There is a place where Satan will try to find you, but he will never find you. Holiness covers you. Holiness takes you to a road not even Satan himself will be part of it. That's why you see people, the way you know that somebody has already reached the highway of holiness, you see their life now, 10 years later, they remain exactly the same. Holiness is purity of heart. It's completely being devoted to God. You devote your time, your strength, your mind, your effort, your body, Holiness is not a choice, it's a command. And without holiness, there is no heaven. Without holiness, you will never pass those gates. Without holiness, that door will be shut before you. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, be holy for I am holy. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14.
Aleluia. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. If we can all read it on three. One, two, three. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Without which no one will see the Lord. Look at your neighbor to your neighbor. We need holiness. I believe that there is still a remnant of God that is still keeping herself for the coming of Jesus. I believe that there is, a, there is still a people that are still separated. Do you know that the highway of holiness is a very lonely place? Not everybody will like you. The word says that people will begin to take good as evil, evil as good. Meaning if you're good in the eyes of God, what is good to an evil man, they will see you as evil. That's where persecution begins to come. Do you know that even nature itself, nature itself is raising its voice to tell you that Jesus is coming soon. Nature itself is speaking forth as a trumpet. If you knew what was happening, nature itself is warning you that the coming of Jesus is very soon. And only the ones that have a heart, a pure heart, a holy heart, the one that know the true value of repentance and denial are the ones who will win their crown of life. There is a war in the air for your soul. You look at God and you tell God, God, why is my marriage broken? God, why is my family broken? Why are my brothers separated? Why is there drugs in my family? Why is nothing working for us? Why is there poverty? Why is there anger? And God is asking you the question, why is there no holiness? Why are you setting yourself apart? Why are you seeking God? Why are you going deep? Why are you part of the remnant of God that has kept yourself to purity, that has fallen in love and has bound himself with the Holy Spirit to become one? Why? Because people like to gossip. So much gossip in the church. You talk about your past and you think that God will hear you when you enter to the secret place. And you ask yourself, why is God not hearing me? Why is God not responding? Why? Because there's a curse upon your life. You go into a secret place. You lock the door. Instead of being with God, you're with that person who's in your heart, who you bound in the prison of your heart. And you think that God can hear you. You have allowed another man, you have allowed another woman to take the place of God in your heart. Do you want to know why God made Abraham almost sacrifice his son? He wanted to test him because he came to find out that Isaac was in the place that God was supposed to be in the heart of Abraham, but he passed the test. Are you willing to pass the test in that secret place? Are you willing to soak yourself in the presence of God? God wants to purify the church but if this if the church is willing to allow herself to be purified if the church is willing to allow herself to put everything aside God even if I only have one skirt that's what I will wear if I only have one t-shirt that is what I will wear but I need to reach that place of holiness where I won't care how men will see me but as long as you see me pure there are women who begin to change the way they dress. Why? Because they thought that they were old women. You tell them, you respond, I'm old but I'm anointed. I'm old but I'm in the presence. I'm old but there is oil on my head. I'm old but I'm still able to hear the voice of God. There are women that wear tight, tight pants. They can't even praise God. Don't allow that to send you to hell. There are men who wear skinny jeans. You look like a popsicle with the two sticks. And if this message is bothering you, I know who your father is. The highway to holiness, where nothing can stop you. The highway of holiness. Look, the devil won't know that road. No lion that devours will know that road do you know what a privilege it is to be holy 
do you know how much it upsets the Holy Spirit for his people to still deal with jealousy to deal with envy to deal with murmuring after Christ has already won the victory and has defeated death and has taken the consequence of your sin there is a war in the air it's time for you to stand up it's time for you to be loud why because you have permitted the problem of your life to separate you you have allowed the problem of your life to make you fall from that road the bible calls that road wide meaning there's much space for anybody that is willing to receive the purity the permanent purity of the word of god in their life do you know that you can pray men can lay hands on you there are certain curses in your life that can only be broken the moment you're obedience to the word of god look you have no authority without submitting to the word of god you have no power without submitting to the word of god if there's no obedience there is no authority if there's no submission there is no power do you know how many people pray in the closet you think is the presence of god but the devil's laughing at you right next to you why because you sleep with the devil at night and you enjoy jesus during daylight you still have the appetite of sin you still have the appetite of your flesh do you know what holy people do whenever sin tries to go near them look men who are in the flesh sin plays with them sin chases them but do you know what holy people the holy remnant does when sin draws near he makes sin run away why because holy men no longer have appetite for sin holy men no longer have appetite for fornication holy men no longer have appetite to murmur why murmur why because they understand they understand how the devil works do you know that jesus he didn't die for the devil because the devil's attacking you he didn't die because of that he died because of your sin see the reason why men fall today is because by their sin they give the power they give the enemy power if you never if if you stay away from sin if you can separate yourself from sin the devil becomes powerless a lot of people they mention the name of the devil the name of satan more than they do the name of jesus only if you knew the name that was given to you only if this church knew the power that he has invested in you only if you knew the authority that was in you only if you knew the vision that he has placed in your eyes to see only if you knew that god is willing to walk with you to the end is there a remnant in this church that is keeping themselves for christ i said is there a remnant in this church that is still keeping himself for christ Bible says in the book of Revelations chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot I wish you were either one or the other so because you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold I'm about to spit you out of my mouth do you know that in the spirit sometimes you focus yourself in the outside too much that you forget that when god sees you he sees the real you the inner man the bible calls it the inner man of the heart there is another man that you've been ignoring there is another man that you've not thought about there is another man that man that man is makes you to be who you are do you know that there was this woman she was preaching holiness this woman was going deep she began to tell the people to repent to stay away from sin do you know that there was this prostitute in the corner this woman was just standing there listening and when the preacher was slowing down she said she looked at the preacher she said hey i am a prostitute i fornicate i commit adultery i've done so many bad things but i need you to continue to preach because after you're done preaching when i give my life to jesus so that i know how to preach too Look, I'm not afraid to preach holiness because I know the one with power. I'm not afraid to preach holiness because I know what God can do. The highway of holiness. 
women must keep themselves if you only knew the value that's why the devil likes to attack women so much because of their value women reject this message because they're still in their flesh they're still carnal the mentality is still but but below why risk your salvation because of the way you dress do you know that you provoke other men to fall and the bible says anybody who provokes their brother to fall what does it say it's better for a millstone to be hung around his neck do you know how many blood of people are still in your hand because women are willing to deny themselves they're not willing to be different why because there is still flesh that is speaking somebody was preaching against makeup they were preaching against uh, against earrings they were preaching about everything that women do the way they dress do you know what happened this woman came to is like you're so religious a woman came to you can't be that religious because you'll have people running away from you she said okay tell me in the bible show me in the bible where the bible is against wearing earrings wearing makeup go show me in the bible the woman was on her way home she said this this is the way she responded she said look right now i just got done preaching at a conference and i'm on my way home well i'm on my way home if you strictly want to go by the bible then you take your time to show me and find me in the bible where it says it's okay to wear makeup where it says it's okay to wear tight dress look the devil's not afraid of your curves he's afraid of power he's afraid of the presence he's afraid of people that have denied themselves the devil's not afraid of your curve of your behind of your breast he's afraid of women that have separated themselves and has caused themselves to be holy by the presence of god Look, what makes you to be who you are is the spirit inside of you. The reason why a man can be super angry beyond their control is because there's a demon inside of him. There is an evil spirit taking control of his body. Who is owner of your body today? Your character will say it all. The way you react will say it all. The way you speak will say it all. But if nobody else is in you but the Holy Spirit. See, I need you to know this. That the Holy Spirit does not share rooms with the devil. Why? Because the Bible says you cannot eat from the same table of the devil, of demons, and the table of God. Some of you, you want to share room. Room. You, the Holy Spirit, you want him to share room with evil spirits. It doesn't work like that because the Holy Spirit is holy. And every day the Holy Spirit is hoping that you go to him and tell him, I want your nature to become my nature. Why? Because I'm tired of this life. I want to go deep. I want to go deep. I tell God, God, take me so deep I can no longer come out. Take me too deep. I can never find myself. I can never find my way out up there. Why lose your salvation? Why lose your salvation? Because of the outside appearance. Why lose your salvation? Because you're busy talking about the men of God. See, this is why it's so wrong. Whenever, whenever you speak good about the men of God, do you know the good thing comes to you? When the man of God does something for you, the good thing from God comes to you. And you think that whenever you bring the man of God something bad, a bad thing won't come to you. The Bible says, him who honors a prophet shall receive an honors what? If you do good to the man of God, the good thing will come to you. But it works both ways. If you do something bad to the man of God, automatically the bad thing will come to you. Hallelujah. It says this. In Matthew, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were to hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Why? Because women don't understand that there are souls that are coming in and out and they're still babies in Christ. They still don't know how to detect spirits. 
Slave is not the one who knows how to worship God. Slave isn't the one that knows how to go deep. The one who knows, who has the fruits of the spirit. Slave is the one that till this day you know the truth. You continue to disobey and you continue to wear what belongs to the devil. God is looking for a remnant to keep themselves. Hallelujah. I love this verse here. If we can please go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. I repeat 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. If we can all read on three. One, two, three. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. My God. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you what? Not halfway. Not 90% to God and 10% to the devil. And a lot of people say, No, it's not about the outside, it's about the inside. The Bible says that doctrines of demons will come forth. And do you know how good and convincing it sounds? But the Bible here talks about body, soul, and spirit. Meaning you have to preserve your body in purity. You have to preserve your soul in purity and your spirit in purity. Meaning there are three things that you have to protect. Who is your spirit one with? Because when the Holy, your spirit and the Holy Spirit aren't next to each other, they become one, one companion. The Bible says how, in Amos 3, 3, how can two walk together unless they what? So it's saying if you disagree with the Holy Spirit, you may not be walking with him. Why? You can only become in disagreement with, some, with somebody the moment you've heard what they think is right. So the moment that the Holy Spirit tells you something, to stop doing something, and you become in disagreement with what he said, you can no longer walk together. A lot of people say, wait, they're telling me this, they're telling me that, but I've not yet felt conviction about it. Do you know you can make up your mind so much to convince yourself that this is not wrong, where you give no room to, for God to come and speak to you and tell you that this is wrong. God doesn't only speak to you. Do you know what the prophets in the Bible begin to speak about the prophet of God? God doesn't only speak to him. He speaks to us too. There's a lot of people in this generation that say the exact same thing. Look, this woman of God, this man of God told me that what I'm doing is a sin. But I'm still not willing to change because I'm not felt the conviction of God. You're saying the exact same thing. If God can speak to that woman, that man, God can also speak to me. Your ignorance does not permit, it mutes the voice of God. That's why it's good to obey. Why? Because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus, the one that came down to give you life. To give you the greatest treasure that one could ever have. And that's the gift of holiness. For you to be peace inside of you. For there to be the peace of heaven. The Bible says, peace I give to you. Peace I live with you. I don't give as the world gives. Anybody who's friends with the world is enemy do you know how many christians today they're walking thinking that they love god and god loves them but really they're enemies of god my people perish because of lack of knowledge why because sometimes people rise against the knowledge that god placed in the woman and men of god in, the, in, the, in their lives do you know god placed my leaders in my life for a reason But you find yourself fighting with the same leaders that God placed for your life. So if there is something wrong with those leaders and God placed you under them, there might just be something even worse with you. Don't 
challenge the anointing. Fall in love with the anointing. Serve the anointing. Submit to the voice of God and serve that anointing. Anybody who's friends with the world, what is friends? You love to walk with the world. The Bible talks about the spirit of the world. There is a spirit that loves, goes around, goes, goes forward and back, convincing men to become their friends. There are, may the curse of your blood, may you not answer the call of the curse of the bloodline. Because the years that I've been in this church, I've seen that the, re the main reason why people end up going back is not because of demons. It's because of the curse of the bloodline. It try the first house tries to claim you and pull you back. The house, the first house, it will never stop coming for you until you find yourself in the highway of holiness where no lion can step foot, where no evil creature can step foot. That's why holiness takes you to a different place. Not even the devil can reach. The devil hates holy people because they torment him. The voice of holy people torments the work of Satan. The cry of holy people torments the work of Satan. You love to talk with the world. The world influences you. Start dressing this way. You'll look better. You're not going to sin. I mean, it's just how God created you. Where is your heart? If Jesus were to come now, if Jesus were to come now, why think that tomorrow is the best time to give yourself to holiness when Jesus can come now? Why think that the best moment you can give yourself to holiness is next year or when you're old? Because Jesus can come now. Time says it. Nature says it. What we see in the world says it. Without holiness, no man shall seek God. God, I've been praying for a marriage. I can't see my marriage. I've been praying for a child. I can't see my child. I've been praying for a miracle. I can't find no miracle. The devil's beating me left and right. Without holiness, no man shall see God. You want to see yourself with houses. You want to see yourself with cars. You want to see yourself with titles. You don't want to see yourself with God. You don't want to see God in your life. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Don't expect to get to those doors and tell God, God, I'm sorry. It's because my brother and sister, they were also fornicating in the church. They were also speaking against the pastor in the church. It wasn't my fault. They started first. Do you know that the Bible says, what is, if, what, if what you know is good, you do contrary to, to it, to you it's sin. Sin is sin in the eyes of a holy God. If God was like man, he made mistakes. Sin wouldn't just be sin. There will be a bigger sin than another sin. But we're talking about holy Jesus. The sinless one. The pure one. The holy one. Do you know why the angels in heaven, they bow down every single day and never get tired. And say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Look, if that's, the, if that's not the first image you receive from the God you're worshipping, then you're not seeing right. If there is anything that stands out more from God, it's holiness. It's holiness. It's holiness. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Jesus says, I do what I see my father doing and I speak what I hear my father saying. Do you know what kind of level you have to be in to be able to see everything that the Father does? Meaning you can't live up here. You have to go to the highway of holiness. A lot of Christians right now, they're only on regular roads. There's a stoplight here, fornication. Then you go up. 
another stoplight here lying there we go another red light here lying there we go another red light there stealing there we go i had to stop a little bit god but god is calling the church to a place that is called the highway of holiness where nothing can limit you not your curse not that lion not that evil spirit not goliath not the mountain god is calling the church to the highway of holiness where they can say no to sin and yes to god For God so loved the world that he gave. The father made the first step in sending his son and you want him to do more for you before you do something for him. If God gave his son, look, if we pay tithe, do you know what we expect from God? Multiplication. But when God sent his son, do you know what we think that God wants for us? 50% of us. Why can we give more to God than he gave to, to us? Do you know how unjust we are with this holy God? But yet we're still alive. How many mistakes we do, but God still shows mercy? The Holy Spirit that was placed in you isn't called holy for no reason. Because that is what God desired for you. If a demon of anger can make you an angry person, the Holy Spirit can make you a holy person. Where you don't speak like the world. Where you don't react like the world. A lot of people they like to shout in tongues a lot of people come to church and they like to scream do you know that the Holy Spirit also teaches to shut your mouth the Bible says be slow to speak and quick to what I said it before if this message hurts you I know who your father is I know who you be fornicating with at night way of holiness God is calling the church a wide road the highway of holiness where nothing will no longer get in the way not fornication not lying not stealing not beating your wife not disrespecting your parents not dishonoring God not blaspheming the name of God not choosing yourself over God or over the will of God the highway of holiness nothing can get in the way there are many lanes there are many spots but usually when it comes to highways they're usually empty only a few only a few the tollway is already heaven but now this one this tollway you don't have to pay it's free because the free gift of God is what eternal life your life just doesn't end here. There is another life. Where you no longer have appetite. Look, Satan took Jesus to the highest mountain. And Satan looked at Jesus and says, I will give you this. If you bow down to me, I will give you everything that you see. It is better to stay in the desert 40 days with God than to stay with Satan with everything for one day. How many people Satan has offered you popularity, money, women, cars, and you have chosen to sleep, to fornicate with those things in your mind, and you have allowed yourself to prefer one day with the devil than 40 days in the desert with God. Church, have you chosen sin instead of purity? Have you chosen holiness instead of unholiness? Jesus came and said, you are of your father, the devil. But today, if you say that to somebody, they will run away from the church. But the world speaks much more worse to them and they still stay there. Meaning there is another reason why they love the world. If you try to stop finding value in the outside of you and start trying to look for the value in you, I'm telling you, you will conquer. Because since the beginning, God never died for your body. He died for your soul. 
how has God, how has God himself, Jesus himself, God on earth, died for your soul, but you're still playing with it around with Satan and God? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that God, the Father, he sent the Son to the wilderness to be what? Now when the devil tried to tempt him, what did Jesus say? You shall not tempt the Lord your what? Who was Jesus talking about? Himself. He makes Jesus God. We give to God. We expect, the, we, ex, we expect the multiplication. But when God gives to us, we don't give him nothing back in return. God is looking for a remnant who is willing to choose holiness over sin. God is looking for a remnant that is still hidden where he can look down on earth and it makes Jesus say, Father, I must go down for this son. I must go down for this daughter because time is running. Time is running. Time is running. You're worried about the wrong thing. When is Jesus going to look down towards the earth and say that there is still hope, Father? There is still a chance. But God looks down, there is no more preachers preaching holiness because they have been rejected. They have been persecuted. Many have killed them. Many have rejected them. Many have left them with nothing. God, even if the message hurts, break me but save my soul. Convict me but save my soul. Do whatever you need to do. Bind me but lose my soul. Take away everything but win my soul. Win my soul. Win my soul, not sin, not the devil. You, you win my soul. The holy ones. The holy ones. Holy, the holy people of God, they can never be put to shame. They can no longer taste defeat. Why? Because they have the full um, understanding. They think above and not beneath. They know the will of God. They're able to hear God. But when is a generation able or willing to stand up and tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, here I am, help me. Look, it's good to examine your life. It's good to tell yourself, where am I really standing? God, when you see me, what is it that you really see? Because the Bible says, anyone that claims and says that he has no sin, he is a liar and he deceives himself. Meaning you can think you're doing everything right. You can think that you're good, but that itself is a sin because there's no humility God demands holiness for the church now if we have a church that is able to stand if we have a church that is able to shout and build a trumpet and say to announce holiness to tell people to repent to not be afraid to stand against Satan against the works of the enemy in the lives of people and warn the people to say this is sin and with this you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven this is sin and you cannot enter with this in the kingdom of heaven don't be part of the group of Satan certain things I've seen in the church hypocrisy and sometimes I just, it just breaks my heart because I know it breaks the heart of God certain things that I've seen I don't say I see it but it hurts me because I know it hurts God there are some people that wish to hear what you're hearing now but they don't have the opportunity. There was these two women that I went to. Pastor told me, go and, go and evangelize to them. I went to them. I began to tell them the work of the enemy. Three missions for one person, the way mama teaches us. I began to discern them and I began to speak their life. And then I brought hope to them and I tell them what Jesus did for them and what they can expect to, if they can receive Jesus. They came to me and they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 
But after that, I walked away. Do you know what they did? They came right back and they said, hey, look, everything that you were speaking, it was right on top. My daughter, she suffers with depression and rejection. Whatever you need us to do, we want to experience the freedom that you're talking about. Right now, they traveled, but they promised me that whenever they get back, they'll come to the church. If you knew what was before you, The Bible says that the word of God is true and it's living. Sharper than two-edged sword. If the word of God doesn't hurt, be afraid. If the word of God doesn't feel uncomfortable, be afraid. If you trust anybody in the pulpit that only teaches you prosperity, how you can be great, how you can win the pulpit, how you can be known, be afraid, tremble, run, run from sin run from any message any demonic doctrine run away from every message that does not show you jesus every message that does not take you to the way the truth and the life run look is the least people there are, it, the people that are unknown are the main people that people need to be running to is the men and women of god that are still in the cave they aren't known but when you see them, you see Jesus. It's them you need to run to. Certain people, they like to listen to sermon of God who are big. It's dangerous to be big. Hallelujah. Do I have a remnant in the church? I said, do I have a remnant of God in the church that is still keeping herself? That is still guarding herself? That is still willing to be separated? That is willing to let go? You know what, our brother Jamarcus, the first Wednesday he came, I was the one that was teaching. You know what he said? He said, in my mind, that was the last day I was going to come to church because I hated the conviction. He hated the conviction. But you know what he told me? He said, since that day I heard your message, I never smoked marijuana again in my life. Look, in our mind, we think that if we preach repentance and holiness, God can do nothing. I'm telling you, he can do more than a sermon of prosperity. I promise you. Why? Because when you're preaching the truth, in that truth there is power. In that truth there is transformation. Look, in the message of holiness, I'm telling you, whatever was keeping you up, whatever sin was keeping you up, it will bring you to your knees. Look, I heard the word. It cut me deep with a two-edged sword. It cut me deep, but I went back to my sin. Look, when a sword cuts you, it takes long to heal. Continue to depend on that conviction. Hold on to that conviction. Don't give up. The Bible says you will be surprised who you see in heaven. You will be shocked of the people you see in heaven. Maybe the one you're looking at now, you think his life is ruined. I'm telling you, he will probably enter heaven in a better way more than you. In the highway of holiness is a lonely journey. It's a very lonely journey. The Bible says one shall go, the other one will stay. May you live a life. Of, look, every time I go to mama's house, every time mama has something to say, it gives me life. It pushes me. And I don't understand how it is, but that's the power of the word of God. If the person you're with isn't feeling conviction or isn't being changed, there is something wrong that you're doing with your life. It's very easy to do what is wrong and think that it's right. That's what makes it very dangerous. That's why it's good to go to God. God, even if I think that what I'm doing is okay, even if what I think is doing is right, show me. Where is your life today? If Jesus, if these heavens were to break open, will you miss the rapture? Will you miss heaven? Because without holiness, there is no entrance to heaven. Holiness is the free ticket to heaven. Hallelujah. 
we can please stand. Thank you, please sing. Everyone lift up your hands. Everyone lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Only if you knew who's in this place. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. There's a better life. Oh, 
surrenderance is when you lift up your hands one thing if you pay attention when a police pulls you over the police tells you to do what it tells you put those put those hands up why it's because it's letting him know that you are surrendering are you hearing me so when we also lift our hands in the presence of God, 
It's a form letting God know we have surrendered. Amen, somebody. If you're in a church and you don't lift up your hands, you haven't yet surrendered. You haven't yet surrendered. Amen. So I want us to lift up our hands, everybody. Say, Lord Jesus. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Teach me. Teach me your ways. Teach me to fully surrender to your will. Not my will, but your will. Holy Spirit, take not your conviction away from me. Take not your conviction away from me. I want to tell you guys this. A sign to prove to you that you don't have the Holy Spirit is when you no longer have conviction of the things that used to convict you. I'm going to say that again. A sign to prove to you that you no longer have the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times people think that, oh, I have the Holy Spirit. No. When the things that you used to do, right? The things that you used to not like to do, it no longer convicts you. That means you no longer have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit comes to do what? The Holy Spirit comes to do what? talk to me church the Holy Spirit comes to do what so where there is no conviction there is no what if you're not convicted of your sins you don't have the Holy Spirit let me tell you something I'm not saying you're not gonna sin amen somebody because all of us have fallen short of his glory we're all considered sinners amen all of us here everybody's a sinner but to have the Holy Spirit in you it is the access to let you know that I'm here to redirect you I'm here to conv conv convict you so that it can redirect you are you guys hearing me David said take not the Holy Spirit away from why did David say, take not the Holy Spirit away from me? Because David knew without the Holy Spirit, there is no conviction of his sin. Amen, somebody. So I want us, everybody here, I want us just to pray a, a simple prayer. Well, it may be big. It's not a simple prayer. I want us to pray. And I want us to for, for a minute just to pray a prayer say take not the Holy Spirit away from me wherever in your life the Holy Spirit have left come on begin to pray say Father forgive me any door that I've caused the Holy Spirit to leave in my life to leave my life Holy Spirit I welcome you back just pray that prayer everybody because you can be thinking the Holy Spirit is with you, but He's not with you. You can be thinking the Holy Spirit is walking with you, but the Holy Spirit is not walking with you. He's been far gone from you. He's been far gone away from you. The Holy Spirit no longer dwells in your house. The Holy Spirit no longer lives in you. And the most important thing is to have the Holy Spirit. Because if I don't have the Holy Spirit, I have nothing. Ask for the Holy Spirit. See, Father, take not the Holy Spirit away from me. Take not what used to convict me. Please, please, don't stop convicting me. Please, don't stop rebuking me. Please, don't stop redirecting me. Please, please, Holy Spirit. My spiritual mother always say, that you, we must protect the Holy Spirit as if we are protecting the egg. You know, you're gentle with an egg because you don't want it to, to fall and... You don't want it to fall and be everywhere. You want to protect it. Am I talking to somebody? 
so as we're praying this prayer search within you i'm not hearing you guys praying pray pray search within you say holy spirit don't leave me don't leave me holy spirit because if you leave me i will i will not make it if you leave me i will not make it i will not make it if you leave me i will not make it if you leave me holy spirit i will not make it spirit of the living god don't leave me don't leave me don't leave my children don't leave my household don't leave my wife don't leave my husband holy spirit don't leave us because if you leave us we won't make it come on cry out cry out cry out cry out hey listen andy wait wait listen listen i'm gonna tell you why even we prayed this prayer earlier today for those that was here with us earlier I'm going to tell you why it's so important to really pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you why. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that has full function in this season, in this time, in this hour. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus has already fulfilled his assignment. Are you hearing me? And he said, I'm going, but I'm leaving you what? So... The, who's in full function right now is the holy spirit amen somebody so you need to pray the prayer that the holy spirit does not depart away from you you need to pray the prayer that the holy spirit does not leave your house it does not leave your ministry it does not leave you because you can be operating without the holy spirit and thank you the holy spirit please come on pray 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 Come on, pray, 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 pray. If you got to cry out, cry out. Ask for mercy, ask for mercy, ask for mercy. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you, I need you, I need you. Don't leave me, don't leave me. Don't leave me, don't leave me. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Come on, somebody, don't let me pray for you. Cry out for yourself. Cry out for yourself. Cry out for yourself. Cry out for yourself. Cry out for your family. Come cry out. Cry out for your children. Say, Holy Spirit, don't leave my children. Say, Holy Spirit, don't leave. Don't leave my house. Don't leave my wife. Don't leave my husband. Holy Spirit, don't leave us. Don't leave. Don't leave GRU, Holy Spirit. Because if you do leave GRU, how can GRU function without you? How can GRU function without you, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, we need you. 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 Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. Spirit of the Lord. Oh. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Renew that covenant with the Holy Spirit today. Renew the covenant with the Holy Spirit tonight. Renew the covenant with the Holy Spirit tonight. Renew the covenant with the Holy Spirit tonight. Renew it. He's welcome. He's welcome. Yes. Usher him. Usher him. Usher him. Usher him. Usher him. Won't you come again? Come on, pray, pray, press in. This is for you. Press. This is for you. Not for me. It's for you to press. Spirit of God. It's for you to press. 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 Because the Holy Spirit removes the spirit of rebellious. The reason why the church have a spirit of rebellious is because of the lack of the Holy Spirit. The reason why the, ch the church has the spirit of rebellious is because of the lack of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you of your spirit of rebellious. The Holy Spirit will convict you of the way you carry yourself. Like Evangelist Adrian said the only way to please God is holiness that's the only way you will see God 
Without holiness, no man will see God. Without holiness, no man can see God. I want to tell you that holiness is the nature of God. Without holiness, no man will see God. Now just begin to say, Holy Spirit, I receive you. Just begin to declare, I receive you now. Come on, come on, receive him. Say, Holy Spirit, I receive you now. Say, Holy Spirit, I receive you now. I receive you. I receive you. I receive you. In my heart, I receive you. Right here. Right here in my heart. Put your hands in your heart right now. Say, Holy Spirit, right here in my heart, I receive you. Put it in your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, right here. Right here. In my heart. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. He's doing something in somebody's life right now. Holy Spirit is doing something in someone's heart right now. He's renewing your path. seconds 30 seconds just 30 seconds press press 20 seconds 20 seconds right now because the Holy Spirit is coming in Holy five second five second Holy Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands like you know you got the Holy Ghost. Come on, clap your hands like you know and know you got the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, clap your hands like you know and know you got the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about a Billy Goat. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands like you know and know and know and know and know that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. say this quickly before we close I want to encourage those um, that want to be a part well for those that was a part and it's no longer a part praise the Lord amen but I want to I want to encourage the church one of the greatest assignments that the enemy likes to attack is consistency amen the enemy will aim at your consistency to attack it amen somebody and so when, we, when you establish something, I want to encourage you to keep the consistency in it. Because that's where the enemy wants you to fail. Amen. And I want to, I want to encourage, and it, and it may not be for everybody, uh, but I, I want to encourage you if you feel that God is calling you uh, to, to go street evangelism with us. 
I really want you to let me know. Because we, we need more evangelism. People that can go out on the street to win souls. Not just here, but out there. I want to encourage you. If God is putting in your heart for souls. Uh, and you say, Pastor, I want to come, but I'm afraid. Listen, we're here. I'm going to walk you through everything. I'm going to step by step. You know, we're not just going to put you out there. You're going to know what you're doing before you go out there. But if you feel like it, God is putting that in your heart. Because there's souls out there that needs to know Jesus. Amen. And we don't just want to be a church that is in the building. But we want to be a church that is spreading even outside of the building. Amen. Amen. The Bible said the harvests are what? But the workers are what? That's letting you know that we're lacking. Amen, somebody. That's letting you know that there's not, a, there's not a lot of yes. Amen. Or maybe there's not a lot of consistency. Amen. So let me know. Get with me. And we'll go for it. Amen. I want us to pray. Spirit of living God, I thank you. I thank you for this word. I thank you for what you did, what you spoke to our hearts, Father. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will continue to fulfill your words in our life. Father God, I bless your servant as he came to deliver what you have placed in his spirit to the church, Father. That you will continue to, to use him, oh God. You will continue to be a blessing into his life, Father. You will continue to open up the heavens on his behalf and, 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 and continue to pour more of your wisdom and your knowledge upon your servant, oh God. That his well would never dry up, but his well will continue to flourish. Father, I pray, oh God, that those that are here that have received what the word of the Lord says. For you said those that have ears, let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Because we don't want to be just hearers, but we want to be doers now. Father, I pray that you will make the church become doers of your word. So that we can go out and represent you, Jesus. Father, I bless each and every person. Because they could have been anywhere, but they chose to be here today. Father, cover their vehicles, cover them as they're going home. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And we all say, Amen.